Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Alho here with KissAnalog.com. Today we are going to talk about uh, thrusters, NTCs, NTC, negative temperature coefficient. These guys are resistors. They can handle a lot of power and they change resistance with temperature. What's great about them, you use them on the input of your power supply to limit that inrush current. Um, when you first turn on you see the lights dim in your house <laughs> you know so when you uh, have a bunch of these big old capacitors and these aren't even big ones but you know if you put a bunch of these capacitors after your bridge rectifier then you turn on that switch you gotta charge those things up quickly and uh, and these guys will limit that current to a uh, predictable value and that will cause a stress to your all your connectivity your transformer your fuse especially your fuse um, your diodes all those things they don't have to get hit by that big inrush of current and it's nice to have things under control these are fairly inexpensive uh, th this is a big boy um, and we got a medium size and then a small one in our test over here and ran a test here, used all these meters, used a scope. We're going to talk about this waveform here, what that means. That's what we're going to talk about today. When we have our power supply wired up, we're going to have this bridge rectifier wired up, charging up some capacitors. And when we flip the switch, um, current's going to rush through this rectifier to try to charge those up and we're going to get a big old current spike. So to keep that from happening, we use uh, one of these guys, a little thermistor. And these guys have a negative temperature coefficient, meaning they start off with some ohms and as current goes through and they heat up, they drop down in resistance. So Initially, they'll slow the inrush current down these capacitors. They'll protect the capacitors from having that big hit of inrush current, protect these diodes, and also allow us to use a, a more safely rated fuse that we don't have to rate for large inrush current. And so everything will be much more behaved. So this little guy here, uh, we'll look at the data sheet on that. We'll use our Oops, let me move these out of the way. So what we'll do is we'll get our our uh, astrometer and got our brand new uh, temperature uh, meter. So we'll plug that in here and we'll turn that on. See the temperature is here in the room. It's on Celsius now. So now we're on Fahrenheit, it's about 65 degrees. Kind of chilly outside and we kind of like it cold in the house too. We're <laughs> but anyway, so there we go. And I've got a little thermocouple here. What I want to do is show how to use a thermistor. Here's a big boy and that's a little one. When we have that in rush our capacitors, uh, we're going to slow that in rush down. And what we want to do is the room temperature right now, we're, my temperature probe is sitting right here. It says 68 degrees in here and it's 12.8 ohms across that and uh, no current right now. So what we have is the red lead here is coming from the power supply, goes through the hand tech so I can watch on the scope and it comes into this uh, to the amp range into this fluke 189 comes out of the common kept with the red color and then it comes up to here connecting to our uh, thermistor and we come out of our thermistor with the black lead and go back to the power supply reading current here on the scope we're reading the current here on the fluke and we know that we have a little bit of a resistor in here. It's pretty small. Um, 
So we have this set for Fahrenheit. For those who want to see the Celsius, 19 degrees Celsius, 67 Fahrenheit. This is a thermal couple, it's a K-type they call it, and I gotta hold that down on that. Well, I don't want to sit there and just hold it. And if I use some big jaws like that, I might uh, might act like a little bit of a heat sink. So I don't want to do that. So what I have is I have this putty. I'm, I'm using this underneath my meter. But I have this putty here. I just pulled off a piece. I've had this putty for, I don't even want to tell you how many years, 20 plus years. I don't think it's changed except for maybe it's gotten slightly darker. I don't know if it has. Call, we used to call that monkey poop. <laughs> So I don't know, I'm going to have to look that up and find out what that's really called. But what's great about this is you can do this and hold thermocouples down on things. There's very little mass to it, so it's not going to change thermal properties too much. It's not going to act like a heat sink and uh, doesn't stink or whatever when it gets hot. So it works pretty well. All right, we've got everything set up. The scope is set up for a single trigger. It's gonna fire when I hit the power switch on the power supply. Unfortunately, this power supply I have here on the bench, I need to get one um, out of storage that has higher current capability. This one, we're just gonna send 2.5 amps into this. Um, but it's enough to demonstrate what we're doing. So I've got it set, the output goes up to um, Let's see, I'll set the output so it'll go up to 20 volts. Um, it's 10 ohms, as well as 12 ohms. So with 20 volts and 12 ohms, we're gonna get something less than two amps to begin with, okay? And then this will quickly heat up and this will drop. We won't be able to see resistance when voltage is across there, so we're gonna switch this to voltage. And then when I turn off the power supply, I'll quickly turn this back to ohms so we can see the ohms here. And when I flip the switch, you'll be able to, I'll, I'll show you what it looks like on the scope, but you can see it here on the meter. And you'll see this temperature increase. And that, as that temperature increases, um, we will, you know what I'll probably do is I'll stop it at certain points and then I'll turn the power supply back on and let it really get hot until it stabilizes. But I'll stop it a couple of times so we can read the resistance on the way up. And let's see, this is DC volts, so I'll push that. Kind of got these props so you don't have too much glare, I hope. Hope you can see all these meters. Um, all right, so all I'm gonna do is turn on the power supply and you'll, you'll see the current here when I do it and you'll see current will be just less than two amps it'll increase over two amps it'll it'll go up to two and a half amps to the limit of the the power supply I have here and this guy will get hot okay it's just and it has these leads uh, the, these two guys tied down here but there's some lead length there so there's not much cooling on a circuit board if you put it closer to the circuit board the circuit board will help cool it but not a lot but a little bit but right now, free air, there's really no air blowing around here. So we'll see pretty much what we're gonna see. Um, okay, and on the scope, we'll see the current jump up. It'll, it'll rise up quickly, and then it'll increase a little bit more as this resistance drops until it gets two and a half amps. And then it'll stay there um, as this thing cools down, because now, what I should do, I'll put a voltage probe on the scope as well. So the voltage, what we'll see is the voltage will go up with the current, but as the resistance drops here, the voltage will drop. So that's what we can see with the scope. The voltage here, we'll, we'll see the voltage drop here too. We'll just capture it both places, all right? Let me get the scope probe hooked up. Okay, make sure that's on times 10, it is. And it's also set up on times 10 on the scope, so we're all set to go. Okay, make sure I have the right volts per division. Um, I'll set this up to two volts per division. 
and I should capture. I'm gonna do five volts just to make sure I can capture everything. Current probe is set for half an amp per division, and we're one division. Oh, we're two divisions down, so we're uh, minus one amp down. I think we've got everything set. Now I have just hit the, the power switch. So let's do that. Here we go. Boom. 2.5 amps already. Uh, the voltage here is already dropping, dropping, dropping. And this guy's climbing. It's 110F right now. 120. It's climbing. This guy still dropping. By the way, the scope is set for one uh, second per division. <laughs> so I capture like 14 seconds. Not sure if that's going to be enough. Okay, it's dropping down to 1.4. This guy's been holding 2.5 amps because that's what the current limit set is set on the power supply. And we're up to 200 degrees F. Let's just do a quick Celsius. 104 Celsius. It's pretty hot. Okay. 1.2 volts. Still dropping. This is still increasing. You know what? Okay, we're at 246, 1.1. And, you know, the one thing about this 2.5 amps, uh, if we had 115 volts, 120 volts coming in, AC power, um, and if we had this thermistor, I can smell it actually get warm. <laughs> You know, we had 2.5 amps coming through our thermistor um, off the 120. That would be, you know, uh, what is that? That's 240. It'd be about 300 watts or 300 VA. Uh, be a lot of a uh, lot of power. So I think that's probably a pretty good setting just to to see what in a power supply around two 300 VA what it would be. Okay, this guy's starting to level off about one volt. We got two and a half amps going through it. And this guy's level off 254. Okay, I'm gonna turn the power supply off and I'm gonna quickly change this to ohms. It won't change super fast, so I don't have to worry about being like, you know, rushing, because you kind of see it's leveled off. That thing's pretty hot. It's gonna stay hot for, and you'll see how quickly it cools here. But we'll see resistance here. Okay, let me turn off the current. Switch that to ohms. So it's down to 0.34 ohms and it's already starting to increase. So 0.34 ohms. Okay, so we start off around 12 ohms and we drop down to 0.34 ohms. So that is what this guy will do for us. It'll limit the current and eventually it'll allow the current flow with only 0.34 ohms uh, drop. Now if we're not pulling 2 amps then this guy won't heat up quite as much and it'll have a little bit more ohms drop. So you know we're going to drop about a volt from our 120 volts. I, that's not a problem. It's one volt drop. And if the current's less, let's just say it's linear and we're only drawing half that current, say 1 amp or one and a quarter amps or something like that, then maybe this goes up to two volt drop. If you draw less power, you know, that's that's not gonna be a problem on 120 volts either. Okay, I hope this demonstration was useful and you can see how to use this. So we're, we're up to six ohms already. We're about halfway back and we're at 47C or 114F. That's cool enough that I can touch it. Pretty much around 60C is where you don't want to touch something. That's going to be pretty hot. These are easy to use. You can see that. Um, and they're also very inexpensive. Um, I'll post a price. I, I want to say that's around a dollar or two dollars. Um, this guy is three or four dollars or something. This big old behemoth guy. And we got the middle size one. SL22, 22 millimeters. And that's an MS32, that's 32 millimeter. Also, each one gets a little thicker too. And, uh, and then that guy's um, 
that guy's even smaller. He is the SL12. By the way, always turn off your your meter. Save that 9 volt battery. <laughs> I've made that mistake a couple times. Really enjoying this meter. All right. Well, hey, give me a thumbs up if you like that. And if you have any questions, you'd like to see something else, uh, let me know. Okay? All right. Thanks.